Hello? Hello? Uh, good, good morning, Robert. It's Neil. Hello, hello, How are you Neil. Hello, Neil. Yeah. Yes, that's bad. Thank you. Keeping you okay? Keeping yeah, okay. Thank you, Neil. Has it, been a busy week? Has it been a busy week for you? Or? Yes, yes, very, very busy indeed. Uh, yeah, I've been chock a block this week, but uh, anyway, it's nice to have a relaxing weekend, so it's good to speak to you. Yeah, it's the same here as well. Uh, so looking up the verses that you mentioned, uh, John 2 and verse 20. Um, when we were talking about the temple of Jesus' body. Um, so I've done a bit of research on that. That's verse 21, um, not verse 20. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that yeah. he was talking, sorry, verse 21, that he was talking about the temple of his yes. body. Um, I found a couple of verses that help us understand what was resurrected or what wasn't resurrected. Um, so perhaps, if you, have you got your Bible, Andy? Yes, you'll, you'll find the context for John 2.21 in the surrounding verses, not by yeah. going to other books of the Bible and uh, you're sort of ignoring that. Well, it leaves it open to, to, to thoughts, to ideas in, in those verses. It, could, it doesn't could, we, could, could, could I ask that we have a general rule? If we're going to talk about the Bible, you read the verse you want to talk about. Well, I, 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 must in, I, must, I must insist, I, I won't accept a paraphrase of the Bible or we just have a chat. You, you actually have to read the Bible, please. I, I, I must insist. Well, I agree. I believe the Bible explains itself. We don't need to sort of go into other things. Uh, but I do believe that sometimes verses on their own don't explain itself properly. Right, so let's, let us let me read John 2, 19 to 22. I, is that possible, if I could read that, please? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then the Jews said, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you will raise it up in three days. But he was speaking of the temple of his body. Therefore, when he had risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this to them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Thank you. Yeah. So the question is, what is the temple of his body? Well, it's his, it's his physical flesh, which died and which resurrected again. The reference to three days, destroy this temple in verse 19, and in three days I will raise it up. The it there refers to his body, his physical body. <laughs> And we find that in verse 21, but he was speaking of the temple, singular, of his body, singular. Uh, body is soma in Greek. Robert Gundry did a word study on the word soma. Every time soma is used and applied to a human being, it means a physical body in the, in the New Testament. So he's simply saying that he's, he's going to die and then he's going to resurrect his body in three days. Tell me what you think then. Of this verse. Uh, are we, are we just going to ignore John 2 and just jump onto something no. else? I mean, I had to look no. at something else, but... Well, it, it doesn't It doesn't specifically say his physical body. It talks about temple of his body. The question is, what is that temple of his body? What is the so, word body in Greek in John 2.21? Would you, would you like to, to know what I found? Yeah, but I think what you're going to do is just ignore everything I've said and jump onto other verses. But go on, okay, you, you do what you want. Just, I must insist you actually read the verses or let me read the verse. Thank you. Well, you, you just read it. I'll let you read it. And I'd like to read the verse if it's okay. Okay, where do you want to go? Is it 1 Peter 3 or 1 Corinthians 15? 50. Either of those. Well, you, you obviously know them both. So oh, let's have a look at 1 Peter 3. Yes, I mean, I've looked at your literature in quite some depth. Uh, so basically, your technique is to ignore the verses that I've raised and go to other verses. OK, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. I'm reading from the New King James Version. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit raised Jesus from the dead. And in John 2, 21, we read temple of his body. Body is soma in Greek, and it always means a physical body. So Christ was raised from the dead in the same body that he died in. 
and 1 Peter 3.18 simply says that the, it was the Holy Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead. Okay, if we look at the, you know, you're using the King James, but if we look at the American Standard Version, the Rotherham, um, uh, both of those say, but made alive in the Spirit. Yes, it's, it's in spirit and it, it's in flesh, in the flesh and in the spirit, because they're both dative. Both, both of those statements are dative. There's not one Bible which says he's made alive as a spirit. That, that's what you're reading into the text. The text just doesn't say that. You're assuming the text says that, he's put to I've... death in the flesh and made alive as a spirit. And it doesn't say that. The datives don't, don't allow that possibility. It's simply a contrast yeah. between Christ's two natures, his flesh and his his spirit. If you read it that way in the modern Bibles, where you have the two the two datives, there's there's a um, different uh, there's two different traditions of translating the verse. One set of Bibles say he's made alive by the Spirit, mean made made alive by the Holy Spirit. The others focus on the contrast between Jesus's flesh and Jesus's spirit. But, but there's no Bible that says he's made alive as a spirit. You see, you can't base a doctrine on, on what you'd like the Bible to say, but what it doesn't say. So, so what do you think are the verses in First Corinthians that you mentioned? The flesh and blood cannot inherit God's kingdom. Okay, so now we're going to First Corinthians, okay. Uh, you need to speak up. I can't. I can't hear you. Oh, sorry. Fifteen yeah. and verse fifty. Okay, fifteen verse fifty. Um, this passage, having dealt with the saints of God who are going to rise in glorified human bodies, in verse forty-four, this now talks in verse fifty about the the unsaved, the people who are going to die in their sins, who who aren't in covenant with Christ. Because the passage finishes, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. So I'll read this whole section from verse 50 to 54. But you'll see that when it says, nor does corruption inherit incorruption, incorruption is a reference to the kingdom of God. It's saying that fallen, unredeemed people, think of people like Hitler and Stalin who died hating, hating God, they're not going to inherit the kingdom of God, which is fairly common sense. The kingdom of God isn't going to be for people like Hitler and Stalin who died hating Christ. So verse 50, now this I say brethren that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, here's the context, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. So corrupt fallen people who hate Christ can't inherit incorruption meaning the kingdom of God. Behold, I tell you a mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. This is now talking about the church in a, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. That's the very last part of Armageddon, when Christ comes back. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. It doesn't mean they're going to be changed into non-human spirit creatures. It means they're going to be changed into glorified. They'll rise up in the same body they died in, but they'll be glorified human bodies. Verse 44 goes into that. 53, for this corruptible, meaning fallen flesh under the curse of sin, was put on incorruption and this mortal was put on immortality. So when this corruptible, meaning under the curse of sin, has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Um, the key is verse 44 for the saints of God, that they're going to be raised up in bodies. The word body is so it always means a physical body when it's applied to a human being. They're going to be raised up in bodies that are plumaticos, spiritual, meaning spirit dominated bodies. It doesn't say they're going to rise up in bodies made of spirit. Spirit is a different Greek word, pneuma, which isn't used here. Um, you know, I mean, the Jehovah's Witnesses are at variance with every single branch of the Christian church for 2,000 years. Every single group, Protestant, Catholic, Eastern Orthodox, um, agree that Jesus rose in the same body that he died in. It's only the Jehovah's Witnesses who've been disagreeing with that, uh, to, my, to my knowledge. 
Um, now, if everyone in church history has been wrong, then you need to address, clearly address, the, the churches which Christians have used to prove Christ's resurrection for 2,000 years. You can't just avoid them and go on to other proof texts that you like. You need to address and explain why the Christian church has been wrong for 2,000 years. And you need to explain it very thoroughly and very, very expertly and very, very well. I feel like we have done that, but you're obviously very happy with your own beliefs, and I did. I, I'm not going to change that. Um, you know, you're entitled to see things your way, just as I'm entitled to see things my way. And Jehovah's Witnesses are entitled to see the things through the scriptures. But, 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 but you can't back up your beliefs from the scriptures. You're, of course you're welcome to your beliefs. Everyone's welcome to their beliefs. But you cannot back up your beliefs from the scriptures. That's well, the well, difference between us. I can and you can't. Keep interrupting me, though. Uh, I can't. I'm, I'm sorry. can have a conversation like this. I'm sorry, go um, on. As I say, we, we believe the scriptures explain the scriptures. So if you have a verse that you don't fully understand, often you'll find a verse somewhere else that will give you more explanation to it. Um, that's what we believe. But having said that, everyone's entitled to their own view and to interpret the scriptures the way they see fit. But you're obviously very happy with the way you see things. But there's no point in us continuing our conversation because we're not going to achieve it. Uh, we're just going to go around in circles. Uh, so you're happy with your view, and um, you know. Do you know you why we're going that. around in circles? <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you know we're why gonna, we're going we, around in circles? Do you want me to explain this, why? This, conversa this conversation is going to continue to go around. Now. Do you know? Uh, no, I've I, asked I you a question, and you're avoiding it. Do you know why we're going around in circles? Do you want me to I'm explain why? why? No. Because, because you don't address we, anything we that I say. In our last conversation, you ignored everything that I said. That's why you're I, so I confident didn't... in your Jehovah's Witness beliefs. You just ignore anything that contradicts it. Anything that you can't explain, anything you don't understand, anything that you, you, you cannot... Pr you, just, you just ignore it. You're like an ostrich. You dig a hole in the ground. When, when, an, when, an, os when an ostrich sees danger, it digs a hole in the ground and puts its head, head in the hole. Then it doesn't see any danger. That's what you do. You it's need to address the scriptures well, gonna, that have been well, raised. I'm going to end this conversation now because you're, you're now not being very nice to us. So no, I, I'm, I'm just, could, I'm just trying to have a man-to-man -man discussion on the Bible. Bye -bye now. Uh, aren't you capable of a man-to-man -man oh. discussion? Obviously not, Carnarvon.